Good morning, everyone, and uh, have a wishing all of you a very blessed uh, New Year and welcome to the spring semester. Uh, I hope all of you had a good uh, holiday time, uh, a good season with family and friends, and um, all geared up for another new year to just uh, pursue God's plan, His purpose, uh, just experience His goodness and faithfulness uh, in our lives. Um, and welcome also to this course on uh, Christology. Uh, before we begin um, looking at what Christology is and what theology is and studying about Jesus Christ, um, uh, can someone of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Anyone of you can lead us in prayer? Karen, can you lead us in prayer, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Karen. God, I have the Father, we thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for the gift of life. And thank you for everything that you've been doing in and through our lives. Lord, as we sit, Lord, for this class, Jesus, help us, Lord, to understand from your word, Lord. Uh, Lord, speak to your servant to us, Lord, that we may hear your voice, Jesus. Help us, Lord, to apply this to our lives, Lord. Help us, Lord, to know more about you. And I pray, Lord, that we would uh, excel in our studies, Lord, and we would uh, bring glory to your name, Lord. In Jesus' name, I ask you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so... Are you all excited about this course on Christology? Yes, no, you can unmute your mics, uh, share what are your thoughts uh, on Christology. So what do you think we are going to be studying in this course, Christology? What are we going to study in this course? Christology, any thoughts, any ideas? What is Christology? What will we be studying? You all can uh, type your answers in the chat section or you can even unmute your mics and speak. It will be nice to hear some voices. Okay, Anand says that uh, Christology is all about Christ. Okay. So what aspect of Christ are we going to be studying about? Can we have some uh, participation? Can we have some hearing some voices? Uh, some of you are muting your mics and just speaking, sharing. What aspect about Christ are we going to be studying about? His miracles, his signs, what he did, what he preached. So what are we going to study about Christ? No response? Okay, his life and who he is. Okay. Thank you, Jackin. Anyone else? Okay, so um, we'll see what we're going to learn in this course on Christology. Uh, this course is basically designed, uh, okay, princess from beginning to end, how it's all about uh, Jesus, okay, okay, so what do you mean from beginning to end, and what do you mean it's all about Jesus? 
when we're saying all about Jesus, what are we basically what are you basically meaning? Okay, Vijay Babu says his existence. Okay. Well, can unmute your mics and speak. Okay, so uh, in this course, uh, you know, we are, uh, this course is basically designed uh, to help us uh, to gain a clear understanding uh, of the divinity of Christ, uh, that he is God, okay, and also to understand uh, that Jesus was fully man and fully God. Uh, he was 100% God. He was 100% man. And how uh, this, uh, how Jesus, who is God, you know, how we try to understand how he was truly human, uh, how he was fully human when he lived here on the earth. Uh, we also will be uh, seeing the unique nature of Christ, uh, that he is uh, 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 though he was human, yet he was God. Uh, so how humanity and de deity coexisted in the person of Christ, uh, or how Jesus was fully God, fully man, how he was 100% God, how he was 100% man. Uh, we also understand the significance, so we'll try to understand the importance of the doctrine of Christ and its uh, impact on us as uh, believers. Uh, we'll also understand um, the unique nature of Christ, how he was so unique that he was, though he was human, yet he was God. Um, and uh, it just, you know, what is our response to this whole uh, aspect of incarnation, how God became man, how he was fully God, how he is fully man, uh, just to create in us an awe, reverence, a deeper love, uh, and uh, a deeper relationship with the person of Jesus Christ. Okay, so Prince says it's about the prophecies and how Jesus is one with God. Okay, thank you, Prince. So uh, in this course, you know, we're basically going to learn all of these um, aspects about the person of Jesus Christ. We're not going to be looking deeply into his uh, the miracles or his teachings, what he taught, what he did, but we're basically looking at how um, humanity and divinity coexisted in the person of uh, Jesus Christ, how Jesus was fully God and fully uh, man. Okay, so uh, we're going to study this in this uh, uh, course on Christology. So what is Christology? Anyone knows what is Christology? Christology is a field of study within Christian theology. Okay, thank you, Maggie. It's a field of study within Christian theology. And so in Christology is, is you know, uh, as the word itself says, uh, uh, Christology, so Christ, we're learning, learning about uh, Christ. So Christology is a field of study within uh, Christian theology. Um, now the word theology uh, comes from two Greek words, uh, theos and logia. So theos, uh, uh, the Greek word for theos means God. And uh, the Greek word for logia means word. So when we combine these two together, theology means the study of the word of God, or the study of, of word of God. Okay, So that is what theology is. So two words, uh, theos, and logia, theos means God, and logia means word. So theology basically means a study of word of uh, God. So in Christian theology, you know, uh, it's basically an effort uh, to describe in human words uh, God and his 
action. So we basically people studying about God, trying to understand God, trying to comprehend God. Uh, it's an effort uh, uh, on, uh, on on the part of us as human beings uh, to you know to describe God in human words uh, and uh, describe His actions as uh, well, especially uh, His actions in relation to the world and to um, man. And because this is Christian theology. Uh, it's written from a viewpoint of those who accept Jesus as one whom God has made himself fully known to uh, men. Okay, so that is uh, Christian uh, theology. So Christian theology is basically written from this viewpoint um, of those who accept Jesus Christ as the one in whom God has made himself fully known to uh, men. So Christology is basically a field of study within Christian theology. I told you what Christian theology is. It's, uh, Christian theology, again, repeating it, it's basically, uh, you know, an effort to describe in human words God and his actions, especially God's actions in relationship in relation to the world and to man. Uh, so Christ Christology is uh, a field of study within Christian theology. Uh, which is uh, concerned with the nature of uh, Jesus, who is the Christ. Okay, uh, particularly like I mentioned in the beginning, with how uh, div the divinity and humanity are related in His person, or how the divine and human are related in the person of uh, Jesus Christ. So Christology comes uh, from two Greek words, Christos. Uh, means uh, Christ, which means the anointed one or the Messiah. Uh, so Christos is basically Christ. When we are talking about it in, in, in English, we say uh, Christ. Uh, Christos means the anointed one or the Messiah. And Logos is, uh, is the word or a study of things related to a particular subject. So that is Christology. Um, just a minute okay um so christology is uh, basically comes from two greek words christos christ messiah uh, the anointed one and uh, logos which means word or study of things related to a, a particular uh, subject so christology is uh, generally you know less concerned uh, with the details of uh, Jesus's life and ministry, uh, but it's it's more to look at, or it talks more about uh, how human humanity and divinity coexisted in one person, and that is in the person of Jesus uh, Christ. So, in Christology, uh, is basically you know uh, we'll be considering uh, this question that the Lord Jesus Christ asked his disciples. Uh, on the coast of Caesarea Philippi in Matthew chapter 16, uh, verse 13, uh, where he says, uh, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? So uh, basically in Christology, we will uh, we are uh, basically coming down to this question, trying to consider this question, trying to um, understand it and um, you know, answer this question uh, that Jesus asked his disciples uh, on the coast or on the coast of uh, uh, of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, uh, in Matthew chapter sixteen, verse thirteen, where he says, "Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am?" So, what do you think? What was the answer of the people? When Jesus asked his disciples, "What was the answer of the disciples?" What did they say? Anyone remembers what? Do you read in Matthew chapter 16? Then Jesus asked this question. Thank you, Anand. Uh, some say that you are the Messiah. Anything else? You can go ahead and unmute your mics and speak. Okay, so the disciples answered and said that some say that you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, others Jeremiah, or others, you know, some of them say that you're one of the prophets. 
Um, and, you know, they were giving their answers based on their own understanding uh, of what, uh, of how they comprehended or understood who uh, Jesus was from, you know, what they had learned in um, uh, the Old Testament. Uh, but, you know, and they were just answering in their own understanding out of flesh and blood. But, uh, you know, uh, Peter uh, answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew chapter 16, verse 16. And uh, Jesus says this answer did not come from, you know, your own intellect, your own, uh, your own understanding, but it was revealed to you by my Father. So uh, it was a God-given answer that came to the lips of uh, Peter that, uh, you know, Jesus um, is the Christ, the Son of the living uh, God. Okay. So he received this um, answer of uh, who Jesus was or his confession of Peter about who Christ was as a son of God was through divine uh, revelation. Okay. So this is uh, what we are going to be looking at. Who uh, do people say or who do, uh, you know, uh, men say or women say or people say that uh, uh, I, the son of God, I am. So the problem in Christology, therefore, is, uh, you know, the mystery of uh, incarnation. Uh, you know, has God truly or indeed become man? How could uh, Theos, that is God, or how could this Logos, uh, which is the Greek word for word, truly become flesh? How can God become flesh? Or how can deity and humanity uh, coexist in perfect unity in perfect oneness in perfect harmony in the person of um, uh, Jesus Christ so these are some of the questions that um, you know a student uh, uh, who's studying Christology will encounter and will try to um, answer these uh, uh, questions so as we study this course Christology uh, you know we shall not attempt or we shall dare not attempt uh, to answer the question on how of the incarnation, how the incarnation happened, but we shall only try to understand um, and affirm what the Bible says concerning the person of Jesus Christ, that he is fully God and he is fully man. Uh, so we will look from scripture, you know, um, how, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jesus was uh, fully God and fully man. And like I said in the beginning, you know, in the introduction that, um, you know, um, this is one of the, uh, we'll be studying the doctrine of Jesus Christ. So uh, doctrine is basically the study of any topic, uh, you know, um, looking at it in detail. Uh, so when we're studying the doctrine of Jesus Christ, you know, we will study what uh, uh, the entirety of scripture, what in, the entire scripture tells us about uh, 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 about Jesus Christ. So when you're studying any doctrine, uh, I'm sure you're going to be learning this in systematic theology as well, or you'll be studying various doctrines. So to understand each doctrine, uh, we look at it in the entirety of the entire scripture. What entire scripture is um, talking on that specific uh, topic uh, uh, or doctrine, and then come to a, you know, a conclusion looking at the entire scripture. So um, same also in Christology, we are going to be looking at uh, various scripture passages, Old Testament, New Testament, uh, and we are going to understand and affirm what scripture says, uh, Bible says concerning uh, the person of Jesus uh, Christ. So in Christology, we're basically going to be studying of the pre-existence of Christ, uh, his eternal nature, uh, the Old Testament prophecies about Jesus Christ, uh, Christ's humanity, his deity, his incarnation, uh, his sinlessness, his death, uh, his resurrection, ascension, uh, exaltation, and his uh, return. So this is what we are going to be studying uh, in Christology, just an uh, overview of the topics that we will be looking at. Uh, so with this introduction, let's uh, begin looking at the deity of uh, Christ. Uh, that he is God, and we will begin looking at, uh, you know, to establish that Jesus is God, we will look at the pre-existence of uh, Christ. Uh, 
Okay, so before we go into chapter one, anyone has any questions so far? Any questions? Okay, there are no questions. Yes. So we, uh, as children of God, we fully believe that he was fully God and fully man and we have accepted Christ. So my, my question here is, uh, what is the aim in uh, studying this in detail? Will it, will it help us uh, to know something or what should I look forward to in a positive way in this course? Because we already believe uh, about this, right? So is it something that for our knowledge or... Um, how do we see this course, Pastor? Uh, good question. Thank you, Jackin. So it's basically like I said in, uh, you know, when I was uh, uh, talking about the course overview, it is uh, to just create in us a, a, a deeper reverence and awe and love for the person of Jesus Christ. And also as a student of theology, uh, you know, you would be someone who people look up to uh, even as you uh, uh, with questions regarding the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, was he fully God? Was he fully man? Uh, you know, um, how can you uh, explain to them in, in clear terms? How can you help them uh, or explain to them in, uh, uh, and show them from scripture, uh, you know, who Christ really is? It also opens us, uh, our minds to... Um, you know, to understand uh, uh, the person of Jesus Christ and uh, the love of God for us and what he did uh, in just God becoming uh, a man and also understanding that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Jesus, how we can relate to him, uh, uh, you know, though he was... Uh, uh, he was God, he became human. Why did he have to become human? How can we uh, relate to the human aspect of Jesus Christ? What does it mean to me? You know, uh, just knowing that God became man, uh, you know, and existed as a human being, uh, he understands my frailties, he understands my weaknesses, uh, you know, he knows the temptations that I'm going through, uh, he uh, he knows uh, uh, my fallen nature, uh, he understands me, he sees, uh, he knows what uh, what I go through, uh, you know, when I'm, uh, when I feel deserted, when people leave me, when people uh, backbite, talk against me, uh, or when I go through persecutions, when I go through difficulties, uh, when I feel tired, when I feel lonely, when I feel everyone has forsaken me, when my friends forsake me, uh, you know, just to know that there is a God who, uh, you know, uh, it's not just far away, who cannot relate to me, but who who has gone through all of this and who understands, who sees, who knows and can relate to me in my um, uh, situation. And also uh, uh, to know that he was uh, completely uh, divine, um, you know, just laying down everything, uh, giving up everything, taking on, uh, you know, uh, that that uh, uh, all of the attributes that make him God, he he laid aside everything just to become, uh, you know, a servant, just to serve us. You know, uh, it also leads us to know that, you know, um, when we lay down our lives for Christ, when we uh, give up things, or, you know, uh, it's not something great that we have done, but there is somebody who has already done that is Jesus, um, who gave himself up who stripped himself off of all his divine attributes and took on the nature of man, became a servant, uh, 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 you know, uh, even though he was equal to God, but yet he, uh, you know, he uh, humbled himself. And so, you know, we learn humility becomes, Jesus becomes our role model. So, you know, um, just to see what he has done and also, uh, you know, as as a man, you know how uh, he lived in the sonship glory, how he gave us his glory, uh, how he had the life of God in him, how he gave us his life. So just to know what we receive from uh, both of these uh, uh, act, uh, of these natures of God, his divine nature, his human nature, uh, also to uh, explain this to people, teach it to people, and basically when we are doing evangelism. Uh, you know, this is something that is a major incarnation is something that's a major concern for people of uh, other faiths, you know, who think, who uh, look at this in terms of rebirth, 
uh, and cycles of rebirth, uh, but how it was not a rebirth, uh, but how Jesus was fully God, fully man, and how it coexisted in perfect unity and harmony um, uh, 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 with uh, Jesus Christ. So did that help, uh, Jackin? Yes, yes, Pastor. Thank you for the detailed uh, description. It was very helpful. Uh, you can, uh, as we go through the course, we will uh, we will draw some principles, some learnings for our personal life uh, that we can, you know, um, uh, fall back on, that we can hold on to, and uh, which will help us in our journey, in our relationship, in our walk with uh, God. Uh, so Anand's Paul question, Anand Paul's question is: So, is the study all about the life of Christ? Am I right, Pastor? Uh, yes, it's not just basically uh, when you're talking about the life of Christ, you're not going to be talking about his uh, his his ministry in the sense of uh, his teachings, what he taught, and uh, 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 the science, miracles, and wonders he did. But we are basically looking at the we're basically looking at the nature of uh, uh, Christ, how humanity and deity coexisted in the person of Jesus Christ. So we look at how Jesus was fully God, uh, how he's fully man. And also we will be looking at, um, like I just mentioned, you know, we'll be studying about his uh, sinlessness, his death, resurrection, ascension, exaltation, and his return. Did that help, Anand? So any other questions anyone else has any other doubts or you have any doubts that something that you need you want clarity on of what is said so far okay if not we will move on to lesson one where we'll be talking we're looking at the deity of jesus christ and to establish the fact that jesus is fully god or he jesus is god um uh, and he was God who became man, uh, we need to talk about the pre-existence of um, Christ. Uh, okay, uh, so Prince is asking, does it include mysteries and wonders of Jesus too, ma'am? Mm. What do you mean by mysteries and wonders? Do you mean the prophecies uh, that we're going to be talking about? Or... Uh, the mysteries or revelations of God's word, what he spoke. Prince, is that what you mean? Okay, so uh, basically, maybe just to help you answer that question. Uh, so you're saying uh, mysteries of his revelation, what he taught. No, we're not going to be looking at, uh, you know, what he taught or preach and trying to understand that. But uh, we will just be looking at, uh, uh, yes, the, the whole mystery. Uh, incarnation is a mystery in itself. How you know, humanity and deity existed mm -hmm. or in perfect unity and oneness uh, in the person of Jesus Christ. Yes, it uh, it's a mystery to us. It's, uh, it's wonderful uh, of, uh, you know, God's uh, divine uh, plan of redemption, of salvation. Um, uh, but even as we're going to be looking at it, it's not going to be uh, a mystery for us because we will be studying it in depth and so we will be able to understand uh, things uh, and get more clarity on it yes it it's it is uh, uh, incarnation is something that will still remain mysterious something that is wonderful uh, but something that you know we can uh, 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 that god has revealed to us to the extent in his scripture that we can understand uh, what we need to know about uh, god okay yeah, that does help does that help prince Okay, so Jacob's question is, um, you know, uh, I'm not going to use the word. You, you all see it in the in the chat section because uh, this is going to go on YouTube. We don't want any uh, problems or issues. So 
uh, if you just look at chat section and read, see what Jacob says, he says, you know, people of a certain faith argue that Jesus is uh, this Jesus is only a son of God and not God. So how to defend our faith as Jesus uh, uh, Jesus is uh, God as well. Uh, good question. So that is what we are going to be learning, and uh, this is what uh, and this course is going to basically uh, enable you to, uh, sh you know, uh, share uh, uh, and show from Scripture how Jesus is fully God and how He is fully man. Uh, that He is not just uh, a prophet sent by God, uh, but He is God Himself. Uh, so these uh, people of this faith believe that he is a prophet. Uh, he is not God. There is only one God. Uh, uh, and uh, Jesus is just a prophet, a messenger. Uh, and he is not God. But we're going to look at various scripture passages and uh, which will sh help you, you know, uh, share uh, how Jesus is fully God as well from scripture. That is what we are going to be studying, Jacob. So uh I'm sure by the end of this course, you'll be able to answer that question. Okay, so I'm not going to answer it. That means I'll have to be teaching the whole course uh, now to answer your question. I'll just, uh, we'll just go uh, do it step by step. Is that okay, Jacob? Anyone else has any questions? Okay, uh, we look at chapter one, uh, the pre-existence of Christ. So basically, uh, in chapter one, we are going to be establishing the fact that Jesus is uh, uh, God, not just in chapter one, but we'll be also looking uh, in chapter two, uh, where we'll be studying about, uh, you know, how uh, proving that Jesus is God with his equality with uh, the Father, God the Father, and uh, God the Holy uh, Spirit, also proving that He is God, that He is deity, uh, by talking about His role in creation, uh, which we will be looking in um, uh, chapter 3, and, um, and you know, uh, the Old Testament prophecies of the uh, coming of the uh, of Jesus Christ this incarnation, incarnation that is God taking on human form which we'll be talking in uh, uh, chapter 4 which is all basically uh, you know grounding us in the fact or showing us or helping us to prove from scripture that Jesus is uh, God and then chapter 5 of course we'll be trying to understand what is incarnation and then we'll go ahead to look at the humanity of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so chapter one, um, where we'll be studying about the pre-existence of um, uh, Christ. So, what uh, uh, what do you understand about the pre-existence of Christ? So, what can you quote some scripture verses, passages that uh, prove to us that uh, Jesus uh, was not just you know existed when he was when he was born on this earth, but uh, that he existed uh, before even time began, even before the creation of the foundations of the world, uh, that he was uh, pre-existent, that there was never a time when he, he, uh, he was not, there will never be a time when he will cease uh, to exist, that he always was, he always is, and he will always uh, be. So Anand says, John chapter 1, verse 1, uh, Princess John chapter 1 verse 1, yes. Anyone else has any other scripture references uh, which talks about, thank you Anand and Prince, uh, that's good. Anyone has any other scripture references that prove to us that uh, that Jesus is pre-existent? Okay, Revelation chapter 19. Okay, so can you specifically tell us which verse or... Uh, we can all open our, uh, it's good to all, all of you to have your Bibles with you because we're going to look at a lot of scripture passages uh, because we're going to be establishing from scripture uh, because Christology is a doctrine. We're going to be establishing from scripture. So we'll be looking at scripture. Very important for all of you to please uh, 
look at uh, have your Bibles in front of you and turn to scripture. So uh, Prince says Revelation chapter 19 verse 13. He was clothed with a rope dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Very good Anand. Uh, so what does Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 say? Can says the earth was without form and void and darkness was in the face of the earth and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Okay, that is talking about uh, um, the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So Jack in, uh, I can say that uh, if I was, you know, uh, a nominal Christian, church going christian i would say this is talking about god the father where is it mentioning about the son okay did you get what i'm saying verse 2 talks about the spirit of god which is referring to the holy spirit verse 1 i can say it's talking about god the father where is it mentioning about jesus is god here Anyone else? Any other scripture? If you look at uh, one scripture thing that we can look at that talks about uh, uh, Trinity is, uh, you know, when when uh, says, I think in verse uh, 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 26 of Genesis chapter 1, it says, then God said, let us make man in our image. And if you look at your Bibles, the us is uh, very different from the other us that we write us in, uh, in a sentence. What is the difference between the us and the are there? What is the difference between the word us U.S. and the O-U-R written in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. Anyone saw anything different in that? Basically, the us is a capital U, right? We don't write a capital U for us in, in a sentence. It's Yes, it's a capital U and a capital O. It has an uppercase, right? Thank you. Uh, Prince and Anand. So here it's a uh, capital U and a capital O, which you know, whenever there is a, is a, it's a, a referring to God. You know, if we see a capital H, Him, uh, we know it's referring to God. It's not referring to a human being. Capital H, He is talking not about He in terms of a human being or another person is talking about God. So here they're saying, let us which means God is not single, he's plural, which means it's referring to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, also, let us make man in our image, which is O, capital R, referring to God again, uh, which is, uh, you know, talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Also, we see in uh, scripture, wherever we see a capital S for spirit, it's not talking about human spirit, but, um, uh, but, um, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. Same also when we look at it in John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word. Uh, the Word here, strangely, again, has a capital W, right? Uh, if you look at John chapter 1, all of you, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, it has a capital W in the beginning was the Word, okay? And, um, uh, you know, uh, how can we say this R? which we are referring to in Genesis chapter 1, verse um, uh, 26, is uh, is um, is G referring to Jesus is because, you know, God spoke. And when he spoke, Jesus went, you know, uh, it's the word. Jesus spoke the word, and it was the Holy Spirit who went about uh, bringing things into uh, existence. Okay? So um, just a brief uh, uh, side note over there. Okay, so we're going to be looking at uh, the pre-existence of uh, Christ. Did Christ exist before uh, he came into this world? 
uh, if he did exist, then who was he? You know, uh, was he someone just waiting to, you know, come and be born on this earth? What was his role? What did he do? Who was he? Uh, so it's basically in this chapter, we are going to be looking at various scripture passages uh, uh, that talks about the pre-existence of um, Christ. So um, the, uh, uh, a good scripture passage to open up and to reveal and to talk to people is John chapter 1. Uh, and we look at John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. So can uh, one of you please read that aloud, please? John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the life of man. It's the word of the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Maggie. So here we see that in, uh, if you look at uh, the word, word, it starts with a capital W. Uh, in the beginning was the word. And, and the word, again, capital W, is referring to Jesus Christ. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, capital H, which is referring to God again. And without him, capital H, talking about God, nothing was made that was made. In him, capital H, again, talking about referring to God, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. So if you're going to read this in... Um, the uh, uh in the greek bible basically you know uh i'm not going to kiss, uh, interpret the entire thing in some but it's basically saying in the beginning was the logos and the logos was with theos so we know the word for uh the greek word for god is theos and the logos was theos he was in the beginning with theos all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life and the life was the light of men. So uh, the word here uh, with a capital W is referring to is when interpreted in Greek is the word logos, uh, and uh, John is introducing uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, who he is, um, uh, you know, referring to as uh, uh, as the Logos, he's introducing him as uh, God, okay? And um, if you look at um, uh, uh, John chapter 14, you know, uh, sorry, John chapter 1 was 14. Can one of you read that, please? John chapter 1 verse 14. And somebody we read the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who come from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Prince. So here we see that the Logos became flesh. So you know, John very beautifully introduces in uh, verses one to four that the Logos. Uh, is God. He was with God. Uh, he was with God in the beginning uh, and also proves that how he is God. He created everything. Uh, without him, nothing was made. Uh, he has the life of God. Uh, and in verse 14, he, he is going on to very beautifully uh, introduce this Logos as uh, someone who became flesh and who came and dwelt or lived among us and we were able to beheld his glory uh, which is the glory of the only begotten of the father full of grace and uh, truth so here again we see that we beheld his glory which is a capital uh, h um, also as uh, i think uh, anand had uh, uh, you know, given the uh, prince had given the reference of uh, Revelation 19, verse 13. His he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of uh, God. Okay, so again, the word is a capital W, uh, referring to 
uh, Jesus. Now, why does uh, John, you know, uh, uh, introduce Jesus as the Logos? Why does he use this word Logos? Why can't he just basically say in the beginning uh, was Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ was with God and Jesus Christ was God and he was in the beginning with God and, you know, continue writing like that. Uh, and uh, Jesus became uh, flesh and dwelt among us. But why does he use this you know, he uses this word, word, or why does he use the Greek word, uh, logos? Anyone has any uh, understanding? Ever thought of it? Why did the Apostle John you know, introduce Jesus as the logos? Any thoughts, any ideas? Okay, uh, so the Greek word logos, in, uh, maybe to let uh, the Jews know that all the scriptures itself by like Jesus are about Jesus. Okay, uh, to let the Jews know that all the scriptures uh, itself by like Jesus or about Jesus or talking about Jesus. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? He was a fulfilled prophecy foretold. Okay. Do we have any prophecies uh, regarding the word becoming flesh? Okay. Uh, basically, if we interpret this word logos, you know, uh, when it's translated, the Greek word logos, when it's translated in the New Testament, uh, it means word, speech, uh, reason, a report, or judgment. So it's basically talking about words, talking about speech, uh, reason, a report, or a judgment. But uh, when we look at this word logos, uh, or this use of this word logos in its uh, in a historical Jewish setting, uh, we see that it had a much richer uh, meaning. So uh, Heraclitus, uh, Heraclitus, a Greek philosopher who lived in sixth century BC, he defined logos as an he used this word logos, and he referred to this logos as an eternal principle which gives divine order to the uh, universe. So basically philosophers trying to understand about God, who God is, and uh, about how the world came into existence and everything. So he uh, defined uh, Logos as an eternal principle which gives order to the universe. And uh, another Greek philosopher, Chrysippus, who lived during the third century BC, he used Logos to refer to a purposeful and guiding reason. So he said, uh, this uh, Logos is somebody who, you know, gives, uh, 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 gives us a, a, a reason to live, a guiding reason, and somebody uh, who is a purposeful and a guiding um, a reason. And other philo philosophers uh, during this time used Logos as a rational principle in the mind, um, uh, which is can be expressed in uh, speech. But a Jewish uh, interpreter of the Old Testament uh, named Philo, who lived during uh, the first century AD, he understood Logos to refer to as an intermediary between God and man, somebody who is, uh, uh, you know, like a mediator between uh, God and man. So an, somebody who is an intermediary between God and the uh, universe. So he understood or, uh, you know, he's somebody who interpreted or uh, 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 who, who spoke about or understood the Logos and referred uh, the Logos to as an intermediary between God and the um, universe. So we see that this word Logos was uh, something that was this word uh, or this term was something that was very prevalent in, in the Jewish, uh, the minds of the Jewish people. Um, and uh, they tried to understand who this Logos was. 
uh, that he was an eternal principle which gives order to the universe or somebody who has a purposeful and guiding reason, uh, somebody who is a rational principle in the mind uh, or like Philo says, you know, an intermediary between God and the uh, universe. And also we see that, uh, you know, uh, the, the Jewish people, you know, uh, they understood uh, the Logos as both as a powerful and the creative word of God in the Old Testament. They knew that, you know, um, uh, God uh, uh, brought about things that they see in the universe creation uh, through his um, word. And uh, uh, so they knew it as a powerful creative word of God in the Old Testament by which the heavens and the earth were created. Psalm 33 uh, verse 6. Uh, we'll come back and look at the other understanding of uh, uh, of this the word logos that the Jews had in the mind and then we'll continue from there. We'll go for a break and then uh, we'll come back. Okay. Thank you everyone. I'll see you after the break. <laughs> 